let's have some fun with some power training or good old-fashioned power endurance training as we used to think a little bit about it. If we think about NASM's OPT model, Optimum Performance Training Model, phase number five is going to be the power phase. And one of the primary adaptations we're trying to achieve is power endurance. We're trying to improve the uh, rate of force production to move explosively. And the, one of the ways that's done is with supersets, so we can do that again and again and again and again for that power endurance. Hopefully we've spent significant time moving up in a periodized or planned process to get here, working on joint alignment, posture, core stability, grooving motor patterns, uh, working with the density of the ligaments and the strength of the muscular tendonous junction to handle the, the load, the volume, and intensity of this training coming up. But once we're here, it's time to rock and roll. We're doing this with a superset or back-to-back -back exercises for the same muscle group. You're going to have more of a max strength style of exercise, like a barbell squat, a barbell bench, a barbell row, a clean for one to five reps, trying to recruit the major muscle fibers, the type 2X muscle fibers, with a near maximal lift using 85 to 100% of a one rep max and superset that right away with a power style of exercise for 8 to 10 reps. We're only going to use up to 10% of the body weight, so this might be a medicine ball chest pass, a, um, a soccer overhead throw, any sort of plyometric exercise for the lower body. So the thought process is stimulate or wake up the type 2 uh, X muscle fibers with the heavy, heavier exercise, max strength style exercise, and then immediately without a rest go right to that power application. So barbell bench press follows by a medicine ball chest pass working with the elastic properties of the tissue. If we don't have good alignment and good stability, uh, good balance, muscular balance, good neuromuscular control, then this is just asking for tendonitis or a more serious injury. Definitely an overuse injury in the short term. Long term, it's going to be a lot more serious. So we don't want to throw someone into this phase of training. We want to build up to it. Um, but it can be a fun way to train, and it has a massive implication uh, for athletes. They can get so much out of this. We're resting about two to five minutes in between each superset. And as I'd set up before in a phase two program, you can do this in a total body program or split routine. You can do this in a horizontally loaded program, a vertically loaded program. You can do compound sets, mini sets, tri sets. Have some fun with any way that you want to put it. Some people will start to think about some of the CrossFit information or hit training and, and there's kind of there's a space for something like this right right around there. So this model can be quite flexible. We just want to make sure that there's a systematic progression from stability to strength to power that we're not just throwing in somewhere to someone in a phase too early and that, that phase is not they're not just left in that phase. We want to make sure that they cycle back down. Two to twelve weeks it's going to take from the neuromuscular adaptation. So the the rough approximations we're spending about a month in here as we go to do that. Uh, the tempo is going to be explosive as fast as you can, focusing on rate of force production for each of the exercises. Again, you can do this multiple times per week. Uh, you can do this in a hybrid program or an undulating program where you do this one day in a phase two program, another day in a phase one, another another day. And that is a great way in season um, to go ahead and set up a program for an athlete. I'm not going to spend m much more time on that concept right here of undulating or hybrid periodization. But in the season for athletes or right before uh, right before preseason or preseason, it can be an excellent way to kind of peak someone for their sport or their activity. So focusing on an exercise uh, like a hang clean, you can follow that up with an overhead medicine ball toss. You're going to have that superset of that max strength, one to five reps, heavier weight, fire the type 2X, and then get explosive and move afterwards. This tends to be most effective when we have something like a medicine ball where there can be a catch and release. It's not just pick up a medicine ball and throw it, it's store it and release the energy, store it and release the energy. So having someone throw it back and forth or using a rebound or using a wall or a cinder block wall or bouncing it off the floor to yourself. You can use cables, you can use some of the Kaiser equipment, the triple trainers and Life Fitness has their, ca their um, cable motion system. You can use some of the Kinesis stuff. You can even use dumbbells, right? You can use some bands and resistance cords, but you're not going to have the full deceleration and release and then that loading eccentrically. So if we talk about power training, the description of power training is, is going to be an eccentric lengthening followed by a quick concentric shortening. So we want to have that elastic property of the tissue working and like a throw and catch in a medicine ball is one of the great ways to do it. With a barbell, when you push up, you actually have to decelerate at the end of the movement. You don't get that speed at that rate of force production. So if you have to use it, that's okay. It's not bad or wrong. But we want to go ahead and get these different modalities together, typically a multi-joint barbell exercise with some sort of medicine ball or body weight explosive movement that can focus on that uh, true rate of force production. I've had clients that are high-level athletes do this type of training. I've had 
moms and pops and kids do this type of training, but I also adjust it. So if I've been working with um, a young athlete who's you know 12 and I've been working with them for six, eight, or 10 months, they've been working on corrective flexibility, they're not in the middle of a major growth spurt, I can apply something like this. It doesn't mean that I have them do a, mat, a five rep max and a bench press. I might them have them on a machine, whether it's a free motion cable machine or some of the smaller, whether it's a hoist piece, or when it's a life fitness elastic band pieces or any you plug in machine that you want right there have them do the eight to ten reps give them a few more repetitions and then get up and play catch with them with even a, a soccer ball or a light medicine ball can be an excellent way to do it you can even just do you know kind of full medicine ball workouts with this too but by combining the supersets to get the true effect of NASM's um, concept here is you do the heavier exercise and then followed by the lighter faster moving. Research shows that if you want to improve power and power is force times velocity, you can lift a heavy weight slow, your power will improve. Or you can lift that light weight fast, your power will improve. They're coming at it from both sides and we're also going to help to achieve power endurance during this as well. This can be a complete challenge, especially if you do some kind of circuit where you might do a superset for chest followed by a superset for back and then you throw in some sort of total body mix. So we get into that peripheral hard action circuit or get more creative uh, with other styles of working out or use pyramids. You can put someone on the ground pretty quick. Kettlebells fit in really well here. Kettlebells can fit into that um, max strength phase as well. Use kettlebells in a lot of different places, but I like that power production that you can get from the kettlebells. A little bit more than barbells. I have a little bit more flexibility with that. It's also unilateral for kettlebells. It's, nice for uh, people's shoulders, so if you have any concerns about the barbells or being locked into something, kettlebells can be a great tool. If you are going to learn kettlebells, I would strongly recommend that you work with a kettlebell instructor, not just take a single weekend workshop, but I've learned mine from a kettlebell instructor who helps me from time to time, and she spent almost 12 grand on her kettlebell education. She just keeps going to workshops and keeps applying it, and keep going to workshops and keeps applying it, so I, I, I teach a little bit, but I'm I'm nowhere near the level that she's at. And so I, I would just encourage you with that modality. It can be very powerful if used correctly. So we've been talking about periodization, talking about five different phases of NASM's OPT model. We've kind of reached the top of this particular model right now at phase number five. There's more of the performance application. We could look at max power after that as well. But let's go ahead and we'll stop this video talking about phase five, NASM's OPT model. And uh, NASM's third edition personal trainer text, Essentials of Personal Training, has more information on this topic if you'd like. NASM.org to get that.